Hi everybody. I wanted to do a whole another uh, little bit of a session on a couple of extra teachings that I've got to do with Supernatural and be positioning for Supernatural. This will be a shorter video than the last one. But I just wanted to thank everybody that's been contacting me since that last post. I've had so many people asking for more information, for more teachings that I've got from some of my workbooks and um, even people going to my websites and, and, and getting some of the free resources. And um, as I said before, on one of the texts, but I'll say it again on this message, is that if you want to go onto any of my websites, I'll give them to you in a moment, but if you want to go onto any of them, if you find there's plenty of free resources, you can join up to my YouTube channel, which has all free videos. <clears throat> but on top of that, if you're on one of my websites and there's a product that's for sale, just email me, don't buy it, just email me and let me know what it is that you want. You can do that through the contact in the website or just send me your email or through Facebook or Messenger. And I will actually get it to you. I'll give you the electronic links to all the books, the ebooks, and any other, <coughs> excuse me, any other material that I've got. I will, um, I'll get you because I want to get it to you free. I just want to sew right into your life right now in this time. It's exciting hearing some of the testimonies. I've already been on the phone to a few different people. There's other people that I'm talking to and helping. There's, you know, if if you need help, let me know, and um, <coughs> I'll see if I can do something for you. But uh, today I just wanted to share very quickly two instances that are in Luke. They're just supernatural. There's so many supernatural instances God's been showing me and leading me to in the Bible. And hopefully I can keep sharing these to inspire you. But two of them are in Luke. And it's the description, first of all, of how um, Elizabeth, who gives birth to John the Baptist, and then Mary, who, of course, gives birth to Jesus Christ. So I just wanted to, get, to talk about it because I think it's important for the supernatural in this season we individually have to be positioned. We have to be positioned to receive the supernatural and to get that supernatural. Um, yes, God has full grace in, in this covenant, but it, we need to co-labor with him. We need to do certain things that are wise. And I just want to give these examples that I've um, got here. As I said, the first one is about Elizabeth and Zechariah, who were the parents of John the Baptist. And um, so I'm going to give a few different points. The first point is position your heart. And, and it's not your emotions and it's not your thoughts. This is a powerful example. I'm going to bring a couple of things out of here. But first of all, I'll just read it for you. It's in Luke. This is in chapter 1. In fact, both of them are in chapter 1. This is um, 5 to 7. There were days in, in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest called Zacharias. And he had a, he were, his wife was one of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God. Just remember that. I'll come back to that. So they were both righteous before God. I think that's a positioning we need to be able to get to. I mentioned on the last post, if there's anything wrong, anything we're not sure of, we can always just repent. That brings us into His righteousness and we get to receive that. And they were both righteous before God, walking in the commandments and ordinance of the Lord, blameless. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well advanced in years, meaning they were old. They were older than they could to conceive. Okay, um, So then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, to Zacharias, standing on the right side of the altar. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear came upon him. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard and your wife Elizabeth will soon bear a son. And you shall call his name John, and you will have joy and gladness and many rejoices at his birth. Now, first of all, that's a supernatural. She's, they're both well beyond her age, and she's barren. But this angel is speaking and saying, no, God is going to bring supernatural conception to the two of you, and you're going to have a child, and it's going to be John. And then it says, and um, you will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, because he becomes the way shower to Jesus. And then it says, for he will be the, the, in the great sight of the Lord. And, and then they ask him, don't drink any wine or strong drink. He'll also be filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, even from his mother's womb, he'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now that's pretty cool. And he will turn away many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will also go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now, that alone is, is amazing. He's now, Zacharias is going to have a supernatural birth of 
his child, his son, which is going to be John the Baptist, who's going to show everyone the way towards Jesus. Now, that's supernatural to start with. And Zechariah says this, though, and he goes into doubt. He says, how shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel then answered to him, said, I am Gabriel, who stands in front of the presence of God. So it was Gabriel, the angel, that was speaking this. And I was sent to speak to you and bring these glad tidings. But, but, behold... You will be mute and not able to speak until the days of these things take place because you didn't believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. So the first thing that we learn out of that for me is that I've got to be careful what I say. We have to be careful what we say out of our mouth. If I'm complaining and speaking everything that's wrong in the world right now and this virus thing or, or fear and start to declare that, according to this angel, that's going to bring about a bad manifestation. So he actually mutes Zachariah's mouth so he can't say anything to um, what's the word I'm going to say disconceive or ruin the conception of this miracle that he's going to be mute right through till, till he's born isn't that incredible about how powerful our words is I mean the scripture says the power of life and tongue is uh, sorry the power of life and death is in our tongue and so how powerful is that in our own life to go okay I need to guard this I need to guard what I say I need to guard of how I speak and what I speak it's very powerful to position ourselves with the supernatural that we don't disengage the supernatural by just speaking out all the problems and speaking out our doubt. We're meant to do that. All right. So now here's a second example. And uh, still in Luke, but this is later in, in verses uh, 11 to 20. And it's when the angel comes to Mary. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now, here's the other thing. Um, Elizabeth and Zechariah had found righteousness, all right, and obeyed the commandments. For Mary, she had found favor from God. So we need to be in a position to receive favor from God. And as we receive that favor, then that helps us to position for the supernatural and to receive the supernatural. So do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor in God. And behold, you will conceive in your room... And bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom will be there to no end. And then Mary then says to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? Meaning I have not slept with a man and I'm not going to be sleeping with a man until I'm married. But the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that the Holy One who is to be born shall be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, which is another miracle. And for because for with God, nothing is impossible. So an angel's telling her, with God, nothing is impossible. And then she says this, Behold, being the maidservant of the Lord, let it be according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. So here we have an example of Zechariah who doesn't believe it, has doubt, everything else. He's muted so he can't speak and disengage that supernatural. Mary, though, does a totally different thing. She doesn't go to her thoughts and go to her mind, oh, sorry, to her emotions to let her run her. She actually goes to the word and positions her heart. Again, positions her heart, be it according to your word. There's a, another miracle that we, we know of, um, just, I just got reminded of it then by the Holy Spirit, of when Jesus comes to the beach and Peter has been fishing all night and all his uh, workers are fishing all night and they haven't caught anything. They toiled all night and hadn't caught anything and they're on the beach fixing their nets. And Jesus comes to him and says, hey, go back out on your boat and cast your net on this side. Now, Peter's like, hang on, we, it says we have fished all night. He says, but according to your word, exactly the same way Mary said it, according to your word, we will go out and do it. Now, they go out and do it and get a supernatural miracle of abundance, supernatural business abundance of his business, and that he had to even take another boat, and even both boats were failing to get that amount of thing. That's a supernatural move into business. Now, I gave the examples of the two births because one person doubted and the angel actually had to mute him from speaking. 
That's powerful. I don't want that for anything in any of any of you to happen. But let's position ourselves supernaturally to believe according to our heart and according to God's word, just like Mary did. And miracles happened in both instances. I love it. The Holy Spirit was going to be upon John in the womb. That's the first instance of the Holy Spirit in that sense in the New Testament of that happening. And then the Holy Spirit would then come upon Mary. And so the Holy Spirit is, again, this is my next point. The Holy Spirit is very powerful to bring supernatural. Jesus said he was sending the Holy Spirit to be our comforter in times of trouble, to lead us into all truth. And he's the one that supplies our power. Um, Jesus in one act, uh, in Acts 1, sorry, Acts 1 verse 8 says, And you will receive power when? When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And that was Jesus speaking. So I'm going to encourage you to position your heart according to his word. Find out his word and position to that. Not according to your thoughts, not according to what you want to speak, and not according to your emotions. This is a time, this is a season for us to stand up and stand in the spirit. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you need to ask the Holy Spirit, not only to come upon your life for you, for the comforter and, and, and lead you to all things and all wisdom and all truth, as it says, but also to become upon you for others so you can pray for others and you can pray from a distance. There's so much power in the Holy Spirit. We need those three things to, super, to bring in that supernatural. And again, thank you for sharing testimonies with me. I was speaking to someone on the phone um, last night. And um, just, just how God, he hadn't realized it until now, how God had abundantly given him enough storehouse to, to help him in this period where before he thought maybe that was, he was working too hard or that there was just too much. But God had already supplied, ready for this time. And he's now moving in and taking communion with his family and doing amazing things every night. His kids are praying. There's a whole move back into who is God and how can we serve him in this time and this day. So I, I continue to pray for you. Please, if you need specific prayers, email me. Um, I want to pray for you. I want to help you. Again, here are my two um, <clears throat> websites you can go to. One is, of course, www.alanstrudwickministries.com. It's all one word, alanstrudwickministries.com. And the other one is <clears throat> the um, business site, and that is kingdombusinessministries.com. So kingdombusinessministries.com and alanstrudwickministries.com. Go to both of those. As I said, do not pay for anything. Email me. If you're wanting something, I'll get it to you free. I'll send the links. There's anything that I can do to help you. If you've got questions, please contact me. There's people over this next week that I'm, that I'm, um, I'm talking to on the phone and talking to other people to help them with their businesses and to pray for them. That's what I want to do in this time. So I am declaring over you supernatural provision and please send me testimonies when you've got them or even put them on the post here supernatural i love you i care for you i'm praying for you let's have an let's keep excitement out there for what god is going to do in this time i truly believe and even trump announced it last night in america that is that he's he's aiming to try and turn this by easter i believe god could turn it tomorrow because he's a miraculous god let's get behind this let's pray for a turn of this virus so no more lives are lost in it in the name of jesus amen